um, for number four, we want to draw these these curves, find the area that's bounded between them, and then revolve this area about the x-axis. So um, let's begin with drawing this first curve. And now this is uh, this is an interesting curve because we have y is equal to square root of 25 minus x squared. Now this is a this is a semicircle, right? And if that confuses you, just rearrange this equation. So we're going to square both sides. So y squared is equal to um, 25 minus x squared, and then we'll bring the x squared over to the other side. Uh, oops, that's, yeah, so I have y squared plus x squared is equal to 25, and now this just looks like the, the an, equa an equation for a circle, right, which is y squared plus x squared is equal to r squared. So this is a, a circle, uh, a circle centered at the origin, uh, whose radius is the square root of 25, so whose radius is 5. Um, so let us draw this. Okay, so it goes from 5 to 5 to 5 because it's equidistant, right? So we're going to have here, and I hope I can draw this right. Yeah, we're going to have somewhat of a semicircle. So this is y is equal to square root of 25 minus x squared. So that's one of our curves. Um, what's the other curve? Uh, actually, we have quite a number of them, right? Uh, we have the curve y is equal to 0, so y is equal to 0 is just this one over here. This is y, y is equal to 0. What else do we have? We have x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 4. So over here, um, this is our x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2, and lastly, we have x is equal to 4. Um, Over here, this is our x is equal to 4. Um, so we can see that it does form an area bounded between them, right? Which is uh, this area over here. And then we're taking this area and we are revolving about the x-axis. So we're revolving it about the x-axis like so. Uh, so when we revolve it around the x-axis, it does form a disk, right? Um, so let's see if we can if we can draw that in. So it should it should form something like this. That's a very terrible disk, but hopefully you guys can you guys can see it. Uh, and this disk will have an area, right? So this over here will be the area of the disk. Um, so all we're doing is we're summing up these areas between the line x equals 2, so x is equal to 4. Now, remember that the area of a disk is pi r squared. Now, the radius, it's not a fixed radius, right? Uh, because the radius changes at every point. So, for example, if I'm here at x equals 2, it will be a way larger radius, so it'll be something like this. And if I'm at uh, x is equal to 4, it'll be a smaller radius. So, oh, wow, that is closing all the time. Let's see if I can make this better. Okay, so if, um, if the radius constantly changes, then that means that the radius is a function of x because the height depends on where I'm at in my x-axis. So we can see that the radius is described by the pink curve, right? So a is equal to pi times the square root of 25 minus x squared squared because it's radius squared and thankfully this just cancels out so we have a is equal to pi the square root cancels out with the power so pi times 25 minus x squared all right we are ready to set up our integral so we're integrating uh our boundaries were from two to four and i'm going to put the pi outside since it is it's just a constant and we have the integral of 25 minus x squared times dx. Now, dx, if you guys are curious, dx is like this little width here that I've colored in dark blue, which, you know, it goes across the x-axis, right? 
So we have this little width that gives us our volume, and it's like a tiny chunk of the x-axis. So now we're ready to integrate. Um, when we integrate this, this is pi times 25x minus x cubed over 3 from 2 to 4. So all we need to do is plug in our boundaries. So pi times 25 times 4 is 100 minus, let's see, this is... 4 cubed, so 60, oops, so 64 over 3, and then minus the lower bound rewrite, so minus 25 times 2, minus 50, and then minus minus is a plus, plus 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so 8 thirds. Um, so when we put this in our calculator, let's see what this gives us. So minus 64 over 3 plus 100 minus 50 plus 8 thirds. So this should give us, let's see, yeah, so this is equal to 94 pi over 3. And yeah, that is our volume. So all we did was we found the area between these curves, bounded between these curves. Uh, we revolved it around the x-axis and saw that it forms disks, right? And that the height of these disks constantly change. So the radius is the, the square of the pink function.